Hello, my name is Slim Shady, and welcome to the Slim Shady Show. I like that. <laughs> welcome to the Fred and Ethel Show. We're two old timers spouting off about the traditions today. And I just kind of wanted to start out by saying, you know that part that we read right before the traditions at every meeting? And this is a quote <clears throat> directly from the basic text. We keep what we have on with vigilance, and just as freedom for the individual comes from the 12 steps, so freedom for the group springs from our traditions. As long as the ties that bind us together are stronger than those that would tear us apart, all will be well. I know you've heard it, you've heard it a hundred times, but I have this little pet peeve because some people will substitute the word from and for, and it drives me insane when I hear it. <clears throat> And what they'll say is, we keep what we have only with vigilance, and just as freedom for the individual comes from the 12 steps, so freedom from the group springs from our traditions. There is no freedom from the group. They just, ah! The words matter. For and from mean two different things. If they meant the same thing, they'd be spelled the same way. That's my pet peeve. So, when you're reading the traditions, remember, there may be an old-timer sitting in the background going, eh! would you use the word from instead of for and it might be me so freedom from the group no 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 freedom for the group springs from our traditions okay the one thing that's I always look at when I and you can jump in here anytime is the word vigilance we keep what we have only with vigilance and I looked up vigilance, and it said, uh, my definition of vigilance, somewhere back in the day, um, dictionary that I used, said, ever watchfulness. Well, for this recording, I looked it up on Webster's Online Dictionary. And it says, alerty, watchful, especially to avoid danger. And alerty is actually a word. Didn't know that. We but, learned that today. Yes. And it stands for watchful especially to avoid danger. Danger against the program, danger against recovery, danger against... The I would like to add that the traditions are designed to protect the group from us. I used to think that the, the uh, traditions were to uh, protect the group from you because I knew you were crazy. Hmm. And I knew that you guys did not know what you were doing. And then as I stayed around for a while... I don't know how long, but I had one of them awakenings that, oh, the traditions were actually per, uh, designed to protect the, the group from me. Because I have a personality that will fuck up a group in a heartbeat. And it's important for me to understand how to uh, uh, communicate with other human beings, right? Uh, so it's me that the group has to worry about. So when I'm in a business meeting... One of the things that's important for me is is that I have the right to say something one time, and that's it. And then I sit on my hand. If I have to say it twice, I'm worried about my ego. And if it goes against what I, the decision goes against what I think, that's okay because it's a group consensus. Uh, it's not a Ethel. I'm going to be Ethel this time. Okay, you it's can be not that. an Ethel uh, uh, decision. And then I would also like to add that. Narcotics Anonymous is one 12-step program. I think that we push the traditions a lot harder than other 12-step programs right. because we, uh, f between 59 and uh, 60, somewhere there in that Christmas time, we didn't meet for at least a week, maybe two weeks. It just depends on who you listen to. And since it since our starting at 1953, we always have problems with personalities controlling uh, uh, and so we had a hard time with tr the traditions and AA had just really started using the traditions in the 50s and the 12 and 12 didn't come out until 53 right so we know that if you don't follow the traditions you will not last you will fold and I know this for a fact as a group because I've watched several groups in my time fold because of affiliation fold because of one personality wanting to control everything that type of thing so we want to be part of the solution not part of the problem and we want people to enjoy service work and not loathe it okay i want to get a little bit into the background of the traditions before we get into some of the questions that we had about them traditions were first published in 19 
46 and in a grapevine written by Bill Wilson under the title 12 points to assure our future and then they were formally adopted at a first international convention in 1950 by the way that's the year that Jimmy got clean <clears throat> Jimmy Kennedy and then Wilson's book on the subject 12 steps on 12 traditions was published in April of 1953 as Ethel just said um, <clears throat> so part of that 12 and 12 was something that that they called singleness of purpose and uh, I'm gonna read something here <clears throat> that I got off of Wikipedia and you can google it a, a singleness of purpose is a principle derived from the fifth tradition of Alcoholics Anonymous each purpose has but one primary purpose each group has but one primary purpose to carry its message to the alcoholic who still suffers other groups replace the word alcoholic with the identifying characteristic of their fellowship or otherwise rephrased it to have a similar meaning. For instance, Marijuana Anonymous, that member would be a marijuana addict. Well, in Narcotics Anonymous, that member would be an addict. The principle based on the philosophy of those with that share common physical cravings and mental obsessions can best understand and help those that are struggling with their specific addictions. Um, that was written by Bill Wilson in 1958. February and, and a, a great vine. Um, there's more to that, but I really wanted to address that if groups don't follow traditions, group fold, and this is, and it's because of the singleness of purpose. And even though that has to do with tradition five, I wanted to kind of bring up a personal, personal story. Um, uh, can I take a break? Yes. Okay. I want Go to ahead. Okay, I'd like to say something, then you say I want to bring up a personal story. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Are we recording? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Uh, on another note of history, one of the things that uh, I don't think we talk about, because we're not Alcoholics Anonymous, right? We're Narcotics Anonymous. But Bill Wilson asked the groups what their rules were to be a member of Alcoholics Anonymous and I believe he got 80 rules back it might have been more or less I can't remember I'm old um, but I, he was able to figure out that if we applied all those rules nobody could be a member of Narcotics Anonymous Alcoholics Anonymous that's right I'm sorry Alcoholics. I'm gonna say Alcoholics Anonymous and you're gonna put that in okay okay um, that's I just wanted to uh, I just wanted to add that so fuck it I added it okay um, I wanted to relate a personal story <clears throat> about a group and singleness of purpose and traditions I belonged to a group back um, before my clean date I actually got clean and was clean for a year um, 81 and 82 and um, I was present when the group received their group copy of the red basic text. And the GSR walked in and threw it on the table and said, that's the biggest crock I've ever read, because it was mailed to his house. And they proceeded to look at it and it, you know, back then everybody was clean and sober. We went to AA and NA. We were told that you couldn't have any lengthy sobriety in NA that nobody stayed clean forever and just NA. You had to go to AA in order to recover. Um, and it basically talked about one program, one solution, one program. And they didn't like that. They, I know now, they were scared. And they ended up taking a group conscious at a business meeting, or call it a group unconscious. Um, whether or not it was a conscience is debatable. <clears throat> But they decided not to adopt the, the basic text and they threw it in the box and it sat there for years. Where it ended up, another story for another time. Did they use a big book? Yes, we used the big book. Did you cross out uh, alcohol and write yes. drugs? Yes, we did. Okay. Um, we did that. We also used a little white book, the hip pocket recovery stuff. Um, that group, within four months of them doing that, I relapsed. And all but two in the group and it was like maybe 17 18 members uh, all but two relapsed all but three relapsed two of them ended up um, working in treatment and the third one ended up going back to AA everybody else 
relapsed and seven people died. And when I got clean again, nine months later, seven months later, um, I went to several graves. So they decided not to adopt the basic text because it talked about one disease and it talked about that in the fifth tradition. So traditions are important to the survival of meetings and of addicts. And that's my personal experience. That's really all I got to say about that. <clears throat> Ethel's recouping. <clears throat> I have a document that I've had for many years called 52 Questions About the Traditions. And we think it came from Greg P. And I'll put a, um, a post up of the questions <clears throat> each time we, uh, we do a tradition. But there's one, there's like the first four is pre-traditions. If you happen to know who wrote the 52 questions about the traditions, and it wasn't Greg, let us know. It's there not, are four questions. It's not uh, World Service approved. It's not World Service approved stuff, yeah. So don't read it. Yeah. <laughs> Can't read it at a meeting. The first one is, what is the purpose of the traditions? Second one, I'm going to go through all four of them and then start over. Second one, are traditions meant to be worked the same as we work the steps? Three, what are the ties that bind us together and those that would tear us apart? And four, what is meant by true spiritual principles are never in conflict and how does this relate to our traditions? Well, the first one, the purpose of the tradition. What is the purpose of the traditions? And Ethel kind of went over that <coughs> when it, it protects, protects us in a my home group from me um, and uh, it teaches me how to act and interact with the people in the groups thus once I learn how to interact with the people in the groups I learn how to interact with people the rest of the people on the planet most so, of us have really strong, strong person personalities yeah and most of us do not know how to get along with people right. and most of us are not only controllers but we're micromanagers Right. Cause, I mean, all of us are, but right. we've all been to a business meeting where you just want to say, shut the fuck up. You've said it 12 times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're beating a dead horse. So what is the purpose of the traditions? <clears throat> to keep us together. <clears throat> the second question, what are traditions meant to be worked the same way we work the steps? Well, the book says from somewhere that... Traditions are for groups, but what are groups made of? They're made of us. So I was taught that if I'm only working the 12 steps, I'm only working half a program. And uh, so <clears throat> the other half being the traditions. And we'll get into how they can be applicable on a personal level. So uh, the traditions are meant to be followed, but they're also meant to be worked, at least in my mind. And these questions are part of that. Thoughts? Thoughts about the traditions are that uh, we first learn to uh, work them, hopefully, with a sponsor, and we apply them to our group. And then we start to find out about the service uh, pyramid upside down, right. and then our group is doing pretty good, so we think, well, now it's time maybe to do a little area service work, right? So now, that's a lot more people than my group. I don't get along with people. I like to argue with people. I like to be right. And uh, so when I went to area, if you've ever been to an area or a regional service uh, meeting, I've not been to a, a world service conference, but uh, you will notice that there's usually a lot of arguing going on and a lot of opinions and a lot of stuff. And uh, the traditions taught me how to get along with people. They taught me how to let go of my agendas. They taught me to understand what serving means. And I'm serving, no matter where I am at with the traditions, I'm serving the addict that comes in the door. And that addict needs to feel comfortable and welcome so they can make their own decision right. whether they belong, right? Agreed. And, and the addict yet to come. And so... I'm not even born yet. So we want to have a cohesiveness of unity. Um, which and, is first tradition stuff. And I'm not sure, you know, how everybody is, because I'm sure most people came from functional families. <laughs> but I came from a very dysfunctional family, not nearly as dysfunctional as some people's families, right? Um, that's paper. That's how professional we are, the sound of paper. Okay. Um, and so we didn't get along. And uh, we had one rule in my family when it came to discussions. 
the loudest one won. You didn't have to know anything. You just had to make shit up, and the loudest one won. And uh, we were verbally abusive and all that type of stuff. And in my first few years, I had a really difficult time uh, being able to get along with my family, especially my parents. And the traditions, taking those and working them in my personal life, it was really important. Okay? I mean, just like, okay, we're going to be talking about the first tradition. How do you become a member of my family? You know, and who is a member of my family? And what does that mean to me? And what is my responsibility for that? You know, what is their responsibility? Things like that. Okay. Next question is, what are the ties that bind us together and those that would tear us apart? Actually, that could be two questions. So the ties that bind us together to me are the traditions themselves, are the shared experience of the horrors of addiction. They are also the shared of experiences of recovering together. You know, <clears throat> um, if you know what it feels like to work a first step, that's different than anybody else on the planet. And there's a point of, of, of uh, relatability. If you know what it's like to see the light bulb come on in somebody's head after they understand the first step or they've worked the fifth step or they've done the ninth step, <clears throat> these are the ties that bind us together to me. And those that would tear us apart are my ego my self-centeredness, my self-loathing, my low self-esteem. Um, these are the things that would tear us apart, things that, that get between you and I, things that cause disconnection uh, from the people of the program. I had uh, two thoughts yeah. uh, the, that binds us together. My first thought is really self-centered, I think, maybe. I don't know, it might just be survival in that once you get recovery from a group, mm -hmm. you understand that that group is your lifeline. And you understand that without that group, this is, this is a life and death disease. And you need other people in your life. So Correct. you have to figure out how to get along. You have to figure out how to find that common ground. So when you go to a meeting or anything exactly. like that, you have to look at what you can identify with and let go of the stuff that you don't identify with. And just know that everybody's different. Uh, the, the, that's part of those that would tear us apart. The tear us apart is, is that why can't we all get along? Why do I have to be so important? Why do you have to be so important? I had to look deep inside and figure out why do I have to control everything? Mm -hmm. Why does it have to be my way? What's, how does that work? Group, it's a group. It's I'm, not, I mean, no. it's not an ethyl. It's not an ethyl. It's a group. So those are the two things I was thinking about because I think you really nailed it on the, the, the other stuff. And uh, I, I just know that um, I'm, you get so tired sometimes when your sponsor, you tell them this great big huge problem and all this stuff, and then they go, what's your part? <laughs> and you're like, I just told you all this stuff. And they go, yeah, so what's your part? And that's what tradition one for me is, right. is what's your part? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. Then the fourth question is, what is meant by true spiritual principles of never in conflict, and how does this relate to the traditions? Any thoughts? True spiritual principles implies to me that there are false spiritual principles. If they're true, then the, the opposite of that must be also accurate. So, <clears throat> what that means is that none of the spiritual, none of the principles of the of the steps or the traditions, because to me, you work steps to learn the spiritual principle behind the steps in order to be able to practice that on a daily basis. Well, the same is true of traditions. You work traditions in order to learn the spiritual principle in order to apply them in your daily life, whether at a group or at home. <clears throat> so, some people will say, well, you know, this conflicts with that. No, it doesn't. There, there's none of them that are in, in conflict. Um, and it basically, this applies to all the traditions. Pause. I have to ask a question. I think of spiritual principles as guides. Uh, I have a different look sometimes and other people do on spiritual principles because I believe that a spiritual principle is only applicable when it's applicable. 
and that there are times that a spiritual principle may not work 100% of the time, and that's why we have several or many spiritual principles behind the steps and the traditions, so we can look at those and figure out which spiritual principle is the one that we need to really focus on at this time. I can think of an example of when the spiritual principle of tolerance would not apply, and that is if I see someone trying to hurt or rape my children and my wife, you know, the spiritual principle of tolerance does not apply in that particular moment. The spiritual principle of kicking their ass applies. Right. Throwing chairs at meetings. Throwing chairs at meetings. I've seen people throw punches at uh, business meetings. Well, but... Do you want to take that out? No. Not necessarily. Um, So I've been having a problem as we we listen to this to... uh, Trying to get my screen right. You know, this never in conflict. So I went out and, and, and looked on the Oxford Language Dictionary of what conflict is. A serious disagreement or argument. Typically a protracted one. I'm not sure I know what that means. An incompatible or at various clash. So none of the spiritual principles clash with each other, I think is what this is saying. True spiritual principles are never in conflict. So they don't clash with each other. Now, they may clash with me or you, uh, but it's difficult to explain. But they make sense. They and, do. And most spiritual principles, the way you and I look at it anyway, is one word. Right. And that one word explains everything that you're right. trying to Correct. accomplish. Correct, I understand, yeah. If you look it up. Right. Okay, we're looking things up on the Google. When I was uh, got clean, the first thing I was told was to go buy a dictionary, dictionary. and read the black parts. Right. Those were two things the that words. I was told. The words? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to probably sum this up in a few minutes as soon as I figure out what the sum up is. Right. Let's pause. Your life does depend on the traditions. No. And so in summary, your life depends on traditions. Uh, we uh, Freedom for the group, not from the group. That's personal pet peeve. Uh, the ties that bind us together <clears throat> are those things that uh, we all share in common. You know, the horrors of addiction and the, the wonders of recovery. The things that would tear us apart are our own, our own self-will and forces outside of ourselves. You know, the traditions came from uh, AA and they were written by Bill Wilson and try to, you know, keep us together. Uh, I think one of the real important takeaways from this is what Ethel brought up of uh, how NA focuses on traditions more so than other 12-step fellowships um, because it affected us so. It affected us so much so that we stopped having meetings between 1959 and 1960, yeah. December to January, somewhere in there, <clears throat> around that Christmas time thing. So, And that and, if traditions aren't well, followed at group level... And then, Jimmy K... Sylvia and that other lady, I can't remember, Pat. Patty. Patty. They made a decision that if they were going to start, restart Narcotics Anonymous, because that's what they did really, was restart Narcotics Anonymous, that they had to follow the traditions. I think, uh, and that was in 59, 60? Yeah, that was in this two-week period. Right. Well, the reason I say in 59, 60 is that they came out in uh, 46, were published in 53, Jimmy... I started the program in 53, N.A., because he got sober in 50, 50. So between 53 and 59, N.A. was tentative or had some starts and stops, starts and stops. I've heard several stories. But for the most part, it was going. But they were running into problems again. And I think I couldn't figure out when it was or where it was. But somebody said, if you don't take this over, it's going to die. There was a personality, an actor named Cy. That's right. Uh, and he's been, he was involved in it from the beginning. And he had one of the really strong personalities. He offered a lot of affiliation to people. And then eventually he started, uh, helped start or started Synanon. So uh, right. he had one of those personalities where you just now. could not uh, deal with. And so everybody stopped. You no, know? Stop yeah. going to meetings, you mean? Well, yeah, because the meetings turned into one place and then. The place got so dysfunctional, and yeah, everybody stopped. And Cy, oh, this is one thing too that I remember is that there was a an interview of somebody, 
and uh, from Sai's program, and they were obviously drunk on uh, the television. Television, right? Okay. And their face was sh was shown. So. Okay. And if I got so, I'm not saying that's perfect. Okay. So right. you can it's correct just, me. Yeah, yeah. This is just history that's coming out of my head. Right. I have not I understand. done the research today. <laughs> I understand. Okay. And we appreciate you listening, and uh, stick around for more. And we'll sign off with that.